all right. So uh, over here, the concourse arm. Okay. Uh, the concourse arm. This is a model that we had uh, made for uh, one of the stations. So as I told you that uh, uh, the load. This is a model that I made in Meda Civil, uh, applying all the loads. Uh, these are bearing points. All the bearing points. Uh, this is a uniform section. The section is like an inverted T beam, and you see that the variation is uh, quite high. Over here, it is 320. This looks like 74, 180. Okay, so all of these have to be properly uh, represented. Uh, this is the moment. As also, uh, uh, if you would observe something. Um, okay. Over here, if you see, there is a section like an inverted T beam. So we have got bearings on this side as well as we have got bearings on this side. So both of the sides have got bearings. Okay. So basically, we are talking about uh, uh, like a corbel. So this is a rectangular beam. It is uh, treated as a rectangular beam with protruding cantilevers. Okay. So the point load is incident on both the sides. Why? Because we have got a girder over here and we have got a girder over here. Okay. So the same principle will. uh we'll use a net moment and we'll design for it that is why it has been resolved into the center point it is just a simple 2d model of which to which i have uh, assigned the section of an inverted t beam okay uh this is a concourse arm and as you saw in the previous one previous slides these these are post tension cables over here these cables these cables have to be represented on the in the software model so this is the uh, cable profile and as you can see at the center the eccentricity is more and this is the cable anchorage block uh, which you saw in the picture okay and uh, there's an interesting uh, procedure to this and you can see that uh, if we resolve this into x and y axis And the z-axis. For now, I'm taking that as this. So, uh, what basically you've got to do is uh, all these points that you see. These are the points, uh, the curve points. So we are defining a number of uh, an array of points. Rather, we are defining only half of it, and then we are mirroring it. Okay. So all these points, they'll have a different coordinate in x, y, and z. So every single point over here. when you are defining a strand every single point has to have an x y and z uh, coordinate and when we have this we, we have a inbuilt uh, command for defining strands so once we put all those coordinates and we mirror it we can have it uh, this way all right so this was about concrete uh, concourse arms uh, if if you are interested in this we'll have we can have a separate session on the design of these uh, amazing cantilever members moving on uh bridge girders so what are the type of girders that we actually encounter so we've got i section girders box girders single cell and multi cell u girders steel plate girders truss girders and composite girders okay so basically we'll be dealing more with box girders and i section girders so this is the model that I, that i made uh, this is representing a complete structural arrangement these are the rail plinths these are the rails the metro bogie these are concrete i section girders and the bearings the bearing pedestals sleeves and of course the post tension cables uh we also see a hole over here uh, that is for drainage purpose okay we'll have a slight cross slope to this deck so whenever we have got rain or we've got any other uh, discharge so it will directly go over here to a pipe and the pipe goes way beyond uh, way way below okay from inside the pier okay so um, typically this is a uh, typical i sections uh, i section girders is most common as we have discussed most common can be placed by a crane very easy to construct it can be uh, constructed on the site or in the warehouse and ported via truck this is a 
cable anchorage block arrangement you will see over here these things they are actually cable anchorage blocks so uh, uh, these are the uh, what do you call it these are seven wire stands okay so it is like this one stand is comprised of seven wires okay so this is useful in uh, stressing all right so coming to the next type of girder which are box girders so i'll show you a 3d model for a box girder this is a model that i made in shipper so oh, this is typically a multi cell uh, box girder so you can see the level of detail and uh, you can see what are the different components that actually comprise a box girder member okay so these are uh, three different there are three different cells to the girder and the protrusions that you see over here these are the shear keys these are called as shear keys which uh, when two different pieces or two different segments are uh, placed uh, or you can say they are joined shear keys will prevent uh, uh, horizontal or uh, lateral uh, displacement between the two pieces uh, i don't know why it is so distorted all right this uh, okay the notch that you see over here this one this is a notch uh, wherein uh, this notch is supposed to accommodate the seismic arrester okay more on that when we talk about loads and this over here is the blister it is started okay this, these are uh, rail plinths uh, and these are the rails how we take the loads i'll discuss in the uh, load section okay so this was the arc model that we saw so uh, talking about the different components of a box girder if you see over here this is a i've only taken half of uh, the box girder okay uh, this uh, we saw over here this was the rail plinth the rails upon which the bogie is going to come okay these were the blisters uh, over here is the anchorage block okay these are different cable anchorage blocks over here the shear keys okay these are the main cables the blist blister uh the box girder the web of which is resting upon the bearing okay of uh, also uh this part is called as a top flange and this is the bottom flange this is the internal web uh these are the diaphragms and this as i, I told you this is a seismic arrester the seismic arrester basically comes over here in the notch okay all right so this is a typical uh, reinforcement arrangement for a box cutter this is a bin model for that uh if you if you could observe uh, the different reinforcements are uh, indicated with different colors uh, the red one is the top flange reinforcement with red the bottom flange reinforcement reinforcement with uh, blue the web reinforcement with the uh, green and this is this this part over here is the diaphragm okay this is a single cell box cutter as also these are the cable anchorage blocks and we need to have an additional reinforcement for uh, to prevent bursting okay when you are applying so much pressure so we ha uh, we have a uh, we can have bursting of concrete okay so in order to prevent the bursting of concrete we need to put some extra reinforcement this is one of the models that we uh, did Uh, for one of the metro projects this is the model which i made in uh, midas civil the same way that we saw in concourse arms uh, we have to 
uh, define a section for uh, n segment and we have to uh, define different segments uh, sections and uh, assign it to a line model and uh, the cable profile with the respective points with the x y z coordinates have to be assigned to the line model that we make okay over here these are the support conditions okay so more on that if we have a, a detailed lecture on design of box girders this is a typical box uh, girder framework so usually what happens is the box girder gets casted on a yard and then it gets brought up to the site as a u section girder all right so about construction methods uh, we have got uh, segmental launching incremental launching crane lifting and in situ casting so uh, the photo that you see over here is a segmental launching procedure this is the main girder uh, this is a launcher okay so what this typically is doing is that it is pulling up these uh, box girders and arranging them above at the exact elevation so i'll show you a video so that would help you understand it better these are conduits these are not uh, post tensioning cables these are the post tensioning cables which are going from within the girder this is how they are being stressed so once they are stressed the excess portion is cut off and see So that was segmental launching. So, uh, as I told you, that when we are considering design, we need to simulate every condition that can happen uh, that a structural member can experience. So, segmental launching involves the uh, crossing over, or you can say, passing over of a very very big machine. All right, this launcher is huge loads. Okay, so the loads from these launchers have to be represented by means of a load case. Okay. so um, uh, what you say is that if you can see over here the entire load is directed on these three uh, legs you can say front support leg and there's a separate launcher case there's a separate launcher case uh, which is highly uh, critical when we are designing pier caps so uh, when a launcher at this stage is only like for example if you have to take the launcher case at this stage like for example if i name this stage as stage 1 at this stage the launcher is only having uh, you can say the launcher only represents its its own dead load okay there are no um, uh, no external loads to it but at this stage it also it represents dead load plus it also represents the dead load of the entire span okay so this launcher load case has to be um, uh, properly represented when you are actually designing a pier cap or you are designing portal piers or uh, for that matter okay so this is a launcher and this is how launching takes place when you have to have a launching done in a water body the ships will bring the girders this is another method this is the incremental launching method 
and the uh, this is how cantilever balance cantilever bridges are constructed one by one the segments keep adding and incrementing uh, incremental launching is something that uh, proceeds span by span okay so it will take an entire span and it will keep on pro progressing okay so now we will come to the load section so before we start design what is the data that you need to have before you embark upon design so the basic thing is that when we are trying to calculate the load it has we, we have to go from top to bottom and when we are submitting a design or we have to complete a design we have to go from bottom to top of course we cannot give them first the design of a pier cap and then ask them okay later on we'll give you the design of foundation that cannot be so first you'll have to submit the foundation design and then you'll have to uh, go your way up uh, of course maybe they'll ha they'll ask you for uh, uh, the design for box coders first so that they can start their casting in the yard so that is a separate case but when you're submitting design it will have to go from pile foundation to the pier cap uh, the pile cap the pier the pier cap and then the pedestals so the data that you need to have before uh, starting design is like you need to have the location details what is the pier number what is the chain age the height the different design levels uh, the levels that we saw in the previous sketches uh, the seismic uh, coefficient of the zone uh, the carriageway details the type of girder what is the cross slope number of bearings if if the span is curved or is it straight you need to have all these details as also you need to know what is the material that is allowed this will take it from the dvr is it uh, uh, what what sort of a concrete that you have to use what is the sbc you will take the sbc from the core log or type of bearing what type of bearing is it uh, what type what type of a support does this span require the span arrangement the section data what is the pier section the pier geometry everything you need to have at hand so what are the different loads that uh, a bridge experiences these are uh, mainly classified into dead loads sidl uh, that is superimposed live load wind loads seismic load